What's up guys? It's Chemical Engineering Guy and we're going to take this mass balance course to see the topic on diagram and flow construction diagram flow construction in general it's how to construct a diagram that shows all the flows process units and essentially how to do it so before probably you've seen we saw three examples about the distillation unit and about uh, mixing unit and I think the last one it was a semi patch it was about a tank that was evaporating exane so if you haven't seen those please go it's one video before you will understand the need of the construction of diagram flows and these are just like general rules how to do diagrams so let's do it it's so easy to construct just go to the basics and you will never get lost because we need actually a, like a standard to know when are we that you can read someone else diagram you can go to internet and understand the diagram etc so in general you will see a text uh, so telling you all the problem like uh, like a verb you they will see you evaporate you dehydrate blah 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 all these things are not that useful or at least I think it's more useful if you organize the data and then draw it like draw an actual diagram I think it's better to see if I tell you there's like this here and I fit it here and then it goes here I think it's better than just tell you like there's a column about I don't know 50 meters and you need an inlet here and we are not going to do that well actually we are going to do that but what we are going to do is to draw that concept now we're going to treat these unit operations for example here this distillation unit or the hydrator or whatever it is we're going to take it as a unit operation and we're going to call these boxes what is a box is nothing more than a block which represents a unit operation the flows or streams will be the arrows showing the direction of the flow it doesn't matter the size or direction of flow just of course that if you connect one arrow to a box you're saying it is going inside and if you connect an arrow to another thing like disconnected you are telling them that you are not having an inlet but an outlet so doesn't matter the size doesn't matter the width doesn't matter the length etc you just need an arrow to show the direction of the flow normally we're going to label up here the name of the flow F with the total if you have it and down here we try to use the composition of the flow comp position sorry doesn't work that much the composition of the flow so you have for example water sulfuric acid and table salt just look what is this? This means weight of water per weight of solution or mixture, whatever you want. But what does it mean is this is mass uh, fraction because sometimes you will have small fractions, so it's not the same, you gotta change it. And right now we don't take care about temperature and pressure, but in chapter 5 you will actually need the temperature and pressure especially if you are dealing with gases so guys let's continue the general rules that I recommend is tag each equipment and arrow so don't let just flows everywhere and sometimes you this flow actually is important it connects why just let it here why don't label M1 M2 and M3 or equipment don't let blocks alone please you, the, you are mixing there's always a mixing unit even though it's like piping but there's something special there mixing please assign variables to the unknown if you don't know that just assign it as a variable you have airflow just tell F you don't know what is it just leave it alone you have this data just write it down Avoid 
access of variables, please. It will help you a lot. For example, if they tell you C is the half of the inlet F, don't you see? Just use half F. For example, I have this half F, C, and D. Why use C when we can use one half of F? It's better, I think. If you can do it, okay. Or if they tell you A is equal to the flow of the distillate, which doesn't make sense, but okay, if they tell you A, E is equal to D, you could actually say E is equal to E, which it, or to D, D and D. You just have one variable instead of two. So, okay, avoid excess of variables. Use the same units to avoid error, confusion, and conversions. So i rather convert everything and then write down in the stream than having the stream with, I don't know, moles and the stream in pounds and mass, like kilograms, tons. So i rather do everything before and, I don't know, if I'm working with kilos, I put write down kilo. If I'm working with tons, I write down ton. If you have the data in grams, I need to change it to tons. I have, have the data in pounds, I need to change it to kilograms, etc. And finally, we are going to do an example. I give you time to pause the video so you can read it. And we continue. An experiment on growth rate of certain organisms requires an in environment of humid air enriched with oxygen. Three input streams are fed into an evaporator chamber to produce an output stream with the desired composition. So, A. Liquid water is fed or fed at a rate of 20 centimeter, cubic centimeters per minute. B. Air, which is about 21% of mole of oxygen and the rest is balanced. And C. Pure oxygen with a molar flow rate one-fifth of the molar flow rate of the stream B. So it's 150B. Good. The output gas is analyzed and is found to contain 1.5% mole of water. Draw and label a flow chart of the process and calculate all unknown streams and variables. So we're not going just to draw the, uh, the diagram. We're going to actually calculate the answer. So remembering, we have water here, we have this outlet, and we have an inlet. They tell you this one is one fifth, which means is 0.2 here. And well, okay, let's say Q. Water, okay, we have all the flows. In F, let's go for the compositions. I recommend going first for the flows and then going for the compositions. Okay, you know water is of course 100% water. So we're going to put the volumetric water, volumetric flow of water. And F is way much interesting. You have 1.5 mole of water, which means it is 0 0.015 gram of, well, moles of water per mole of solution. Then you have X, an unknown, of moles of oxygen, and this is the thing I told you about. Instead of using Y, let's use 1 minus X, which makes sense. Well, it would be 1 minus 15, sorry. Just to let you know Y plus X plus 0 0.0 15 will give you 1. So let's use, if we wanted to substitute y, there's something about this. Oh, sorry, no, it's a minus. Minus, minus. So instead of using y, we can use this here. And that's everything we're actually not solving. I just wanted to show you how to label it. The solution you can find it here. Go to this web page 
and you can search for the course courses and then choose mass balance and I have a mass balance problem section solve section of chapter 4 which is the one we're studying right now of Elder but yeah that was in general let's continue with the exercises they label you this one and they tell you calculate n which is pounds moles of methane which is, will be this one right here it's very easy just 0.3 pound mole of methane per each pound of solution and we have 100 pound of solution so you just need to multiply this here times this and you will have 30 pounds mole of methane which makes sense because if you have 100 moles and you know 30 percent of them are methane makes sense 30 pounds mole methane are contained in there now they ask you to calculate the mass, not moles, but mass of C2H4. We need to calculate first the moles. So we do the same process we've done before 0.4 times 100, you get 4, 40 pound mole C2H4. Now, how do we change moles to mass? Easy. We just need the mass, the molecular weight, which is 30 pounds per each pound mole. So you multiply it and you get this value here, 1,200 pounds of C2H4, nice. Now we continue this exercise 2, they tell you calculate the flow of M, that means toluene, in terms of X. So they don't give you numbers, they just tell you to let everything with variables. Please ignore this. Now. You know the flow times, that's, this is the amount of toluene entering, it's F, let's say this is F, and we say 1 minus X, because X, they tell you is benzene, 1 minus X is Y toluene. So we could, use, we could use Y times F, which is exactly F times 1 minus X, they give you 250 kilograms per hour, which we already have, this is here, and we're changing hours to minutes. So this hour takes this hour, and we will have the kilograms per minute. Here it is, nice, good. And finally, we have this stream. They tell you to calculate N mole of CCL4. So number one, we need to find the specific weight of the solution. They give it to us and they tell you 1595 kilograms of CCL per cubic meter, no, cubic milliliter, no, cubic centimeter, which is, no, ignore me, ignore, sorry, it's kilograms per cubic meter, CCL4, sorry, it's now let's calculate the mass, it's simply density times volume, density is this data here, we put it right here, times volume which we know it's 75 milliliters, we know that 1000 milliliters, hopefully you know it, it's 1 liter, and we know that 1000 liters, this is not that common sense, but try to learn it, 1000 liter is equal to 1 cubic meter. So what we're going to do here is, liter goes with liters, milliliters goes with milliliters, and cubic meters take out the cubic meters so you are left with only kilograms doing the math you get this now finally we have mass we have molecular weight we can calculate moles so just divide with the molecular weight and you get the answer how many kilomoles of CCL4 are in 75 milliliters of CCL or, and that was everything I wanted to show you about diagrams, how to construct them, don't get lost. A, a good tip I show or tell is always do large and separated lines so you can add data here and here and here. Because if you do like three streams are going out and you don't even have a space to write. So try to do the biggest flow diagram you can do. 
So see you in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.